Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Father, we thank you for this morning. We ask a blessing on everyone who is watching, who is listening in on their home, hallelujah, their children, oh Father Lord, their circumstances, oh God, their bank accounts, oh God, you are the God who supplies every need according to his riches and glory. We declare that your children are blessed, oh Father. God, we ask you first and foremost to forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. Create in us clean hearts, renew right spirits within us today. Day we pray and Lord as we go through this time of praise and worship on this the Lord's day and as we hear the Word of God I pray that everything will penetrate into our hearts the minds will be changed today Lord the lives will be changed today that there will be a turnaround today in the name of Jesus that there will be repentance there will be renewal there will be restoration in the mighty name of Jesus today oh God we look to you you are the author and the finisher of our faith you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And Lord, we want to say the in-between, O God. And so we give every situation over to you today, Lord. And we ask you to bless your servant, Dr. Floyd Antonio, as he comes with the message. And all who represent and, and pray with us and support us, O God. I pray, dear Father, Lord God, that the, the Spirit of the living God rests upon them today. Rest upon their homes in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you all to the Citadel Inc. We're going to hear in a minute from Dr. Floyd Antonio as he comes with a message. I'm going to encourage you just to share this video with uh, someone who needs to hear, hallelujah, that, uh, um, you know, God is able to do all things in our life. We are able to overcome. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Come on, somebody, just worship the Lord. Lift your hands and praise him. Lift your hands and praise him. He's worthy, he's worthy. Oh, we sing, say to you, he can move mountains. Our God is mighty to save. He's mighty to save.
in the name of Yeshua Amashiah, the Jesus who is the Christ. <laughs> Hurricane Ian made landfall on September 28th as a category four near Keokosta, just west of Fort Myers. I've been there. If you can recall, the winds at the time were estimated to be about 150 miles per hour. The disaster Ian caused catastrophic damage with losses estimated to be well over $50 billion. That's the kind of damage. Although it was mostly done by flooding with the cities of Fort Myers and Naples, millions were left without power in the wake of the storm. Several inhabitants were forced to take refuge in their roofs, just barely clinging on for life. But soon enough, it went away. But what happened afterwards? The cleanup, the mop up, the aftermath. That will be felt for a long, long time. Our reflection thought, thought for today is simply the aftermath. And I'm going to give you hope because it's going to be a positive point that we are going to be emphasizing today. The aftermath that we're going to be focused on today is what to do after you got it. What that it is. I'll soon be letting you know. Something has to follow something before you can talk about aftermath. Amen. And so my positive spin today when I talk about aftermath is what happens when you've asked, when you've been caught in a storm, a perilous situation, a disaster, a catastrophic yes. encounter, and somehow you get a breakthrough. Yes, the question, what happens after? This is the aftermath that I want us to focus on this morning or afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. Of course, we emphasize over and over that people have needs. Hello? When we get into difficult circumstances, when we meet the challenges of life, there are needs. There's a need for breakthrough. There's a need for victory. There's a need for deliverance. What do people do when they are faced with these mountains? Some people quit. Some people try to do it all by themselves. Me, myself, and I. But well, I am submitting to you this morning that the most crucial thing you can do when you're faced with those mountains is to ask for help. Yes. While Ian was passing, and even after that storm passed, there were people just barely able to keep their heads above the waters because they were in the attic of their, their homes. And somehow they knocked or they called. Others were on rooftops waving what were they doing they were calling they were asking for help yeah. if you're in a situation i'm submitting to you this morning that the best thing to do in these perilous disastrous times is to ask for help don't think that you're too high and mighty because if you're too high and mighty to ask for help you will not be too high and mighty to succumb to the storms to the tempests so ask for help this is not just my opinion, it's my conviction, yes. But I learned that from the master teacher. Because he told some people in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, and some of you know it well. What did he say? He said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open unto you. Because whosoever, whoever asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And if you knock on the door, knock on the rooftop, knock. In the desperate situation of your troubles, chances are you will get help. More about that in a little while. So ask for help. And this is where I'm going to focus the, the major part of my attention this morning 
on the asking part. Because some people ask and nothing happens. Some people say they ask when they in fact never really did. So if you're going to ask for help, it's good for you first of all to assess the situation. So for example, if the flood is coming and if you get a warning from the weatherman saying that the storm or the hurricane is going to come, you get the warning, you assess your situation. If I stay and it's a category five, what will happen? Is there someplace else I can go? Of course, there are times when even with our best assessment, we get it wrong. The storm could turn from where it was projected to travel, that path could switch. And if you're caught in that situation, but in any event, you have to assess the situation. And when I say assess, you say to yourself, whom should I ask of help? Who should I call if I need help? You assess. You say, if I call, will I get any help? Will anybody hear me? Am I able to do something more than just using my voice? What if I have a torch, a flashlight to wave? What if there's some other distress sign that I can use? You assess your situation. And I dare say this assessment can be rather quick, especially in times of seriously imminent danger. Amen? So you assess the situation. In your assessment, I want you to think of the source of your help. If a child is going to ask mommy or dad for help, they know, or they should know, that help will come. Yes. I want to talk to somebody this morning that the greatest source of your help should be the maker of heaven and earth. The psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth and earth. I want you to bear that in mind. Because if you know that it's a sure foundation, a, a sure source of help, you may want to look there first. You don't want to try all the experiments and fail because sometimes you won't get a chance to ask because the situations would swallow you up. So ask. Yes? And when you're going to ask, there's a certain attitude with which you have to ask. A lot of us, when we say we are asking, we are demanding. I am your son. I am 18 years of age. Give me my inheritance. I need it now. I'm not going to go to that story this morning. It's in the Bible, the story of the prodigal son. Is that the way to ask? Well, let me say at the outset, when you're going to ask, you need to exercise humility. Hello? You need to exercise respect. In other words, you and I need to know our place. So, when I was going to my mother to ask for something, I didn't demand. I asked as a child with full confidence that once she's able to give, I'm going to get. So that's the attitude. But I didn't lose my politeness. I, as a matter of fact, I couldn't. And those of you who grew up on the island or in some rural parts of this, these very United States back in the day, you knew, you know, respect is due. But above all of that, there is something else you need to do when you're going to ask. Because sometimes parents ask, ask you, why do you need this? Why do you want this? And you have to be able to explain yourself. Hello? I remember when our younger daughter decided that she wanted to go to a university up in Michigan. We are in sunny Florida. We don't get snow down here. And she said, Daddy, this is where I want to go. I said, dear, are you crazy? Why do you want to go to a place like that? It snows there and it's very cold. You're a tropical bird. You're from Florida. But she gave, she, she argued her point with respect. She said, Daddy, I talked with my teacher. 
my teacher told me that that's where she went and that's one of the top university in the nation for what I want to do and I want to go there I said but well, how are you going to manage with the coach she said daddy I can do all things daddy I need that's where I need to go in order to get what I want to do and she argued her case guess what daddy relented because what she was saying made sense and then after I agreed you know what she said to me I said okay daddy <laughs> smart girl she was she said well daddy if I'm going to do this you and mommy have to support me all the way I couldn't back out. I said yes. Because she presented her case. Bear that in mind. If you're going to ask, you need to have a foundation for asking. You need to have grounds for asking. And you need to have faith. You need to have your, your, your humility and show respect to the sinner, to the elder, to the source who has the answer to your need. I didn't say worship them. I say be respectful and be humble. So you've asked. And you and I know that sometimes when you ask, you get the answer right away. Sometimes mommy and daddy, or anybody else, say, let me think about it a little while. And sometimes it will do as well if we just go and think about the situation before we go and give an answer. And so if, if you ask and you don't get the answer right away, what do you do while you are waiting? What are you supposed to do while you are waiting if your answer doesn't come immediately? Are you going to be impatient and keep going back and say, I asked you for this thing from yesterday. Why don't you give it to me? Or if you have to ask, you can humbly say, I did ask yesterday and I didn't hear anything. You see the difference? Attitude there. I say all of that because we are coming up to a time and we've been talking about breakthrough from January of this year. We call 2022 the year of breakthrough. We have looked at different scenarios and we have testimonies because people have latched on to the principles that the Lord has given us and we have seen breakthrough in many fronts. I dare say, I believe that there are still some people who are waiting for the breakthrough in 2022 and the year is coming to a close. So are you going to quit? No. So let me tell you something more. There's attitude. I want you to do, go with me for a while. And if you're able to grab a hold of your, your Bible, go to the New Testament book of St. Luke and journey with me into a well-known story found in chapter 17 and it's somewhere in the verses 11 down through to 19. And in that story, you will note, and I could just read it if, you're, if you have your Bible there with me, and somebody wants to help me read, that's fine. If we look at that, St. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, stay with me right here, 10, how many? 10, 10, 10 men who had leprosy, 10 men who had a dreaded skin disease, 10 men who were terribly sick, they met Jesus. In other words, they could see him from where they were. They stood at a distance, hello, and called out in a loud voice, Yeshua, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Stay with me right there. Ten men. See, somebody passing. I have a feeling that they might have heard about this Jesus. I have a feeling that somebody had been talking about deliverance and ministry and breakthrough and this little guy from the village of Nazareth, this little Jesus guy was doing some awesome, awesome things which were beyond magic. I just suspect that. The Bible didn't say specifically that these 10 heard it, but they asked for help. There's another reason 
They stood at a distance. Mm -hmm. In that state, if you had leprosy, if you have that dreaded skin disease, you were considered unclean, totally unclean, and you couldn't be caught near to a person. Wow, people were so respectful that it seemed they would put them out of the city. They could talk to people from a distance. Think back in 2019 when COVID came and people didn't know so much about it. The disease was just spreading rampantly and many fell to it. It was a dangerous thing. So this was a scenario with these guys they had to keep far from people. But when they saw Jesus, he said, he didn't, he didn't say, what's your name? The Bible didn't say that. He said, what's wrong with you? I'm going to see if I can pray for you. As a matter of fact, Jesus never even said, I'm going to pray for you. He did a most interesting thing. And if you look at verse 14, you will say, <laughs> when Jesus saw them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went. Go and show yourself to the priest. Is the priest a doctor? Back in the day, the priest functioned in that realm. If you look back to the Levitical laws, you will see they had to show themselves to the priest and there were rules given. If you see the skin look like this or, or, or the mold in the house for a certain number of days, you had to do that. So the priest was highly favored and could see God for things that he didn't understand. So what Jesus was saying, he was saying, listen, I am respecting the law. I am respecting the culture. And I am just telling you, go on. Go and show yourself to the priest. What did the lepers say according to scripture? Did they say, well, heal me first and let me see. Show me, show, show me. Or what are you talking about? I can't go to the priest like this because I'm unclean. I'm going to infect him with my dangerous disease. The scripture didn't say that any of the ten lepers did that. Stay with me. Remember what they did from a distance? They asked. And if you're going to ask, you must have faith. It stands to reason that they were expecting that somebody was going to help them. But when Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. It is clear that they went. They started moving. And the Bible says, as they went, what happened? They were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. I'm just summarizing this story very quickly because it's very short. One of them, hallelujah, just one. You know the story. One of them, when he saw that he was cold, when he saw that he was, his skin was okay, when he saw that he felt all right, he came back. I imagine him saying to myself, no, I, 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 I can't keep this part just to myself. I have to go back to the source of my merit. I have to go back to the source of my breakthrough. And so he went back doing what? What did he do when he saw? He came back doing what? Yes. Came back praising God. That's what the scripture says. He came back praising God with what kind of voice? A little soft, thank you, thank you voice, so to speak. No, a loud voice, the scripture tells me in verse 15. And then he did something more. He threw himself at Jesus' feet. And what did he do? He thanked him. Yes, the whole Nation in these United States will soon start to talk about Thanksgiving because we enter the Thanksgiving month tomorrow. But what do you mean by Thanksgiving? What are you going to do for Thanksgiving? Is it just another party because you have all the money and all the food and all the goods? Uh, more and a little later. But this one out of ten came back with a low voice. Ah, I didn't hear the scripture say somebody told him to be quiet. He had gotten his breakthrough. He was very excited, very happy about it. And he was not going to allow anybody to stop his praise. He came back with a loud voice. And let me tell you something more. <laughs> it is very important. He was a foreigner. Any foreigner living in these United States of America? Let me just pick on US for America. 
foreign woman. Any foreigner living here? Somebody tells me that America is really a nation of immigrants, really. Foreigners. For those who were born here, if you look back in the history books, the appearance are the appearance, appearance, and you go back. We're not born here except for the indigenous people. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But in this particular chapter, the person who came back was a foreigner. Stay right there with me for a moment. Sometimes your problems can be so repulsive that you have to stay at a distance and call. Stay at a distance and ask. But once you have your faith and your respect and your humility, let me tell you right now, it doesn't matter if you are a foreigner or a native or a something else once you live in this America. If you do the thing, the right thing, in the right way, at the right time, you will get through. You will get your breakthrough. And let me tell you something. What caused this man to get a breakthrough? This foreigner more than that. He was a Samaritan. The Samaritans, they were called half-breed because the Jews had intermingled with the Syrian soldiers who had come in. You know how it goes. It happens all over the world. So they were not supposed to be thoroughbred. So they were half-breed and they were called foreigners. And here we are thinking that prejudice might be something new. It has been in existence, it seems, long before we know of a United States of America or an England or a France or a Germany or a Spain or any of those islands of the sea. So it was a kind of prejudice. So the Jews didn't mix with them. I pray that that has changed today for my Jewish friends who are listening. Amen. We are more enlightened now. Amen. Hallelujah. But in this context, it was a foreigner who came back with gratitude. And it says something to us here. Let me modernize it for you. There are some people in these United States of America, this land of opportunity, where you have access, total access to all that is there. It's just for you to take it. That has to do with the provision of the founding fathers and successive governments. And I'm, I'm political here, but not partisan. I said successive governments who try to improve on this great experiment called democracy. But there are some Americans here and they have the exposure to the work, to the job, to the university, to the various other opportunities. Help when you need it. And they just sit back, it seems. Some of them, they don't want it. But then they have some little foreigners. I pray they come in legally. Hello? And when they compare what they see to what they left behind, they thought, man, this is great. I better make use of it. Make use of it. So let me say to all and sundry, who are listening to this voice, when you see opportunity for good, for success, for progress, latch onto it and do your part. And along the way, if troubles and turmoils come, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be in a job because you get a new promotion and you want to throw your way around. You don't know the job fully well. You don't go through the process of orientation and all you have to do is just ask somebody, how is this done? It doesn't mean you are not educated. It means you are in a new position and you need to know how the thing works. Ask. But when you ask and you get help, you want to be like this foreigner. Let no one know the difference when it comes on to appreciation. Make use of the opportunity. I'm talking to some young people probably and I pray that you'll hear my voice. And if you were born in these United States of America, look around for the opportunities to improve. Don't declare that anybody owes you anything. Look for the opportunities that are available to you. Latch on to it and work your way. Work your way. And when you need help along the way, ask. It is here. If you came in and you are an American by a... Uh, uh, you know, naturalization through the process, like uh, St. Paul in some instances, use the opportunity. But let's get back to the story here. Jesus, when he saw the joy, the excitement, the appreciation, the, the wanton abandonment of pride just to give thanks, he stopped. Jesus asked in the 
verse 17 of that St. Luke chapter 17. He said, were not all ten healed? Were not these ten people healed? So come on somebody, talk to me. So how is it that I don't see the other nine? Where are they? <laughs> Where are they? Has none of these people returned to say thanks? Has no one returned to give praise except this little foreigner? So let me tell you something. If you're born and bred in these United States, you're a human being. You have a right to be here. If you're black, if you're white, you're a citizen, you have a right to be here. If you come into this country legally and you follow the process that you're supposed to and you're an American citizen, you have a right to be here. You may be termed or deemed a foreigner, but if the system allows you and you're here, you have a right to be here. So let the Americans who were born here give thanks when something good happens, when you get your breakthrough. Let those who come in as foreigners, when you get your breakthrough, give thanks. Sir. Don't be like the nine. So, Jesus was appreciative and he recognized them. And so he said to this one man, he said, get up man, you throw yourself at my feet. You, get up man, just go. I admire, I'm paraphrasing, I love your faith. It is because of the faith that you have which has made you well. Hello? When you're going to ask, let me repeat, it is your faith that is going to make you well. So, problems will come, mountains will come, you will need your breakthrough, and you pray and you ask, it's good to ask. When you're going to ask, you ask with the right attitude, uh, the, uh, attitude of humility. But let me tell you something else that you need to do when you're going to ask the Heavenly Father about a situation. You have to learn to pray according to his word. You won't know his word unless you read his word. And I hear somebody say hallelujah. What does he say when it comes on to pray? I did quote ask, seek, knock at the beginning. But he says a lot of things in his word about asking. He said before you call I will answer and while you are yet speaking I will hear. He says in his word that as a father pitied his children so does the Lord pity, pity us because he knows our frame. He knows that we are frail. He says when it comes unto asking, if you're going to ask him, don't come in doubt because you're going to be like the waves of the sea. If you don't read the scriptures, you won't see things like this. So you go to pray because you're having a problem. You need a breakthrough. You're calling out from a distance. So go and quote in his word, Lord, you said in your word, that uh, if anyone lacks wisdom, uh, he should come to you and ask, and I have a situation here. It's a financial situation. Uh, 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 somebody's approaching me about an investment, uh, and I don't know what to do. I am not wise enough. Please help me. Because the Bible says if you don't know what to do, if you need wisdom to deal with a situation, you go and you ask, uh, and there are several others. Uh, huh? If you need a healing, what does the Bible say? It says, Lord, you said in your word that healing is the children's bread. You said in your word that by the stripes of Jesus, Yeshua Amashiah, I am healed. Hey, so you tell him his word. You don't have to worry about chapter and verse sometimes. You just need to know that you have read the word and you encounter it. And some of you will know that the older you get, is it less you can remember the exact chapter and verses where some scriptures are, are meant. Most of the scriptures that I can quote by heart, guess what? I learned them from the days in Sunday school as a youth. Others I have to make a special effort to remember exactly where they were found. But you have to know his word in order to ask, to negotiate. Remember I told you how my daughter negotiated her case? She did her research and she asked her. <laughs> And she got her breakthrough. And let me tell you, she made very good use of her breakthrough. 
I'll say no more on that. Even now, when she's doing what she's doing, she made good use of her breakthrough. But she knew that her breakthrough didn't come from her mom. Her breakthrough didn't come from her dad. She knew, and I pray God that she will continue always to remember that it is God who has given breakthrough. They made use of their opportunity, not becoming a burden to this country, not joining the statistics of the unfavorable, and you know what I mean about that. But you have to know the word. You have to know your argument to present it. You know, somebody said, a famous preacher once said, you have to argue your case from a legal point of view. Tell any lawyer, when you go into any court, they're going to ask you to support the claim that you are making. And if you can't support the claim that you are making, the only way you can win your case is if you have a bogus lawyer. I shouldn't say that. But the lawyers would have gone to school and studied for years. They would have known the laws. So if you commit a crime and you commit to think that you can outsmart the lawyer, you won't be able to argue your case. As a matter of fact, some of us have to hire lawyers because we don't know enough. And these lawyers are able to argue the case. But if they don't know the law, if they don't know what you did or what you are accused of it and how the law applies to you, they can't argue your case. May I say to you this morning that when we go to the Lord for our breakthrough, be prepared to argue your case. Do it respectfully. And a lot of us, when we say we go to pray, that's what we ask the Lord. Eh? We pray. We believe in these long, sanctimonious prayers. There are places for those. Hello? But sometimes, we have got to learn to tell the Lord exactly what's in our heart, mind, soul, spirit. Because he already knows anyway. But by us doing that, we are honest to ourselves and we make it easy for us to get our breakthrough. But when you get your breakthrough, what should you do? You should give thanks. I'm going to tell you a story about myself. Because sometimes a story is worth a thousand words. I remember when I graduated high school the first time, I got a number of O-level subjects, really nice, including my English. But I had an interesting math teacher in my final year, and I couldn't ask a question, so yes, I failed the math. Miserably, leave that there. But somewhere in my psyche, because I had past maths coming up from the all age school to my early days in secondary, I just felt that going out into the world of work without math and the English at the time was not a good choice. So I went to my mom. I said, Mom, there's an opportunity that I can go back and repeat that final grade and do math. I said, Mom, I'll do that and do another subject that I feel and I will add some more to it. I promise. And my mom took me to task. Why you where, why do you want to do that? I said, Mom, out in the world of work, you have to prove that you have math and English. It shows that you applied yourself well in school. She said, but son, where am I going to get the money? I don't have the money. I said, Mom, I, I promise you, if, if you can just find the money someplace, I promise you that the first job I get, I'm going to make sure that you get back that money and more. And my mom looked at me with love in her eyes. She said, son, I don't have the money, but I have one pig. <laughs> the the, the uh, uh, people in those villages, they would rear animals, pigs, cows, goats. My mom had a pig. I used to eat pork back then. I don't eat it anymore, on the side. She said, I have one pig. I'm going to sell that pig. And I'm going to give you the money. But as soon as you start working, you need to give it back to me. I said, thank you, mom. Thank you, mom. I will. I went back for that final year. I applied myself as best as I could. I also had a lovely math teacher who was always entertaining my questions. And I went and I passed my math. I went and I passed um, the other subject that I failed. And I think I got a few others. So I had a few GCU level. I felt good. But watch this. I didn't just tell my mother, thank you, collected the money, and then said to her, mm, I've passed. See, I've passed the exam. 
I got a job and I could go anywhere in the island, but I stayed in my community, stayed at my mother's house. So immediately, the housing allowance, the rent allowance, all of that, I said, send it to my mom. Much more than she paid for the pig. So you would say, I have two little things, and that's okay, I could go on. But I spent the rest of my life, to this day, appreciating and thanking my mother, so much so that when I was so-called fairly successful in music and uh, I had music played in various parts of the world, I signed up with a royalty agency and the money used to come into that uh, district where my mother was. I said, Mom, every check that comes, right, you, you have my permission, just go cash it at this particular place. My mom cashed those royalty checks for years until she left the country. That was my way of saying thanks. What I'm saying to you, therefore, is that when you get your breakthrough from whatever it is, you should go and make the rest of your life a life of thanksgiving so you could sing like the American. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. So the aftermath, what do you do after you get your breakthrough? Give your initial thanks, give your initial praise, give your celebration. Go testify about the goodness of God, yes, and what he has done for you. Let your soul cry out hallelujah, yes, let the joy be unspeakable and full of glory, even when you don't tell them the half, and spend the rest of your life in thanksgiving. Your, your act of thanksgiving will include getting yourself more firmly grounded in his word, uh, living according to his word, praying according to his word, uh, and then you want to spend the rest of your life, a life of thanksgiving, doing something bigger than that, helping uh, your fellow men, the aftermath uh, of your breakthrough. I am not talking about the aftermath of a hurricane because in these disaster struck areas people make a lot of noise about it uh, and uh, sometimes it takes years to build it ever and then sooner the, 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 the media move on to the next uh, sensationalized topic and you're left behind but let me tell you whatever your situation is when you ask when you ask the king of kings and when you do it right and you do it according to his word and he gives you your breakthrough I am asking you this morning not to be like the nine who were are grateful even though they got their breakthrough, even though they got their healing. You want to be like this one, this little foreigner, this guy. Where is he from? Somebody ask. Huh? Is he from UK? Is, it, is he from one of the islands of the sea? Is he from Mexico? Is he from Haiti? But yes, he got the breakthrough. You want to spend the rest of your life in positive gratitude. Positive gratitude means you don't do anything to, to rape the system. You don't do anything to hurt the system. You don't take part in crime and violence. You don't take part in anything that will bring disrepute to the country, but even more so to the kingdom of God. You're not going to participate in any scam or any scheme that defrauds your fellow man or the government or anybody else for that matter. You spend your life in a life of thanksgiving. And when you are in that mood, because every day is a day of thanksgiving for you, because you have done the mock-up operation correctly, because you're behaving correctly in the aftermath, you don't wait for big things to happen and give thanks only in those times. You give thanks for every little thing. Because even when it doesn't look all right, you can say, like the Jamaican songwriter, don't worry about a thing. Because every little thing is going to be alright if you know the King of Kings. Because you are so positive, you speak that life into somebody who is going through. You can say to them, don't worry. Uh, every little thing is going to be alright. If you know the source of your breakthrough, uh, I can point you to that source this morning if you don't know. I can point you to the world this morning. You might be going through, well hold on, 
because a breakthrough is on the way if you can hold on to your faith. But God knows the kind of person that you are. And I said this before, he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. And yes, he will answer your prayer. He will heal the nine. Uh, but you don't want to be like the nine when it comes on to gratitude, appreciation, and living accordingly. You want to be like the one. So, people talk about aftermath of destruction and all the death and the sadness that come along with it. And we must not leave those who are suffering in places, uh, certain parts of Florida where they're flooding and all of that. Do what you can in your community. Do what you can to help. Reach out, not to take advantage. It's true to do that. But the aftermath that we want to focus on this morning is what happens after you've gotten your help. Because your help has come. You've got your breakthrough. You've got your car. You've got your house. You've got your new job. You've got the healing. Your son has been healed. Your daughter has been healed. Yes, you paid off that credit card. What else? What else are you asking for? You got a breakthrough. Hallelujah. What else are you asking for? So now you're giving thanks. And to you, let me repeat this. You've been waiting for that other breakthrough. Is it because you ask and you ask amiss? You didn't ask correctly. You didn't argue your case according to the word. You didn't exercise faith. You just ask and say, maybe God will do something. Or did you come fully convinced? But whatever the case, I want to encourage you to hold on, extend your faith, and plan what you're going to do what you, when you get your breakthrough. Plan how you're going to live the rest of your life. Uh, to give praise and thanks to God. That is what is. Uh, somebody I know recently was in a terrible state. Uh, they had stage 4 cancer. And there were some people in that circle who were saying that she was going to die. But yet there were some other people who believed God for her healing. And yes, uh, yes, uh, a little preacher said to her, God's going to bring you through. But you need to tell God what you're going to do during the mop-up operation. In other words, what are you going to do? And the little preacher said, don't, don't, don't tell me. Tell, tell the source of your breakthrough. That person is alive today. God is faithful. I want to introduce you to him and emphasize him to others who may have known him even a little better. If you do not yet know him as Lord and Savior, pray in your own way. Tell him in your own way. Say, Lord, I've heard about you. And at this very moment, I want to give myself to you. And my entire being, my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit, I am asking you to forgive me of every wrong thought or deed that has ever come on account of me. I'm asking you to forgive me, cleanse me, make me a new person. Teach me how to begin to hear from you, to live according to uh, how you command me to live. Teach me to develop a love for your word, a love for prayer, and help me to begin to celebrate, to live a life of thanksgiving. Lord, I know there are some breakthroughs that I want in my life. And I'm planning what I'm going to do when you do that. So I'm going to start practicing to give you thanks. Save me now, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. And those of you who said you are Christ followers, you know, I have to remind us uh, that we need to take this message to heart. We need to trust God some more. We need to take it a little further in fasting and prayer. And we need to stop being so selfish and reach out to help. Uh, listen, listen, listen. The buildings that they call church, good enough for a congregational community getting together. But what happens when you leave? Uh, let your life be a day of thanksgiving. After you get your breakthrough, you'll be able to thank him more if you start thanking him while you wait for your breakthrough. If you start thanking him for the little things that you see happening around. If you start thanking him when somebody else gets a breakthrough and you're waiting, celebrate with that person. Get into practice. By the time you get your breakthrough and you see it, you'll be ready to bask in the sunshine, in the aftermath of what God has done for you and you'll be able to celebrate Thanksgiving. Lord, your word has been powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I am nearly mortal, but you, O oh God, are life your health, your spirit. Uh, we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, and for this young man, this young woman, yes, this other gentleman, this other lady, who has heard your word this morning and decided to turn a new page, I ask, oh God, that you would do something speedily to reveal yourself to him, to reveal yourself to her. And now, Lord, I cancel every ploy, every scheme, every plot of the enemy 
to distract, to take away, to discombobulate, uh, to frustrate, to discourage, uh, ah, to sink people. I cancel that. Uh, and I join my faith with the people who will believe. I join my faith with those who dare to ask for a breakthrough this morning. Those who dare to see it in the distance. And so we give you thanks and praise. We give you thanks as those who have experienced it, some of us. We give you thanks as those who are waiting. And we give you thanks because you are worthy of all praise. All good gifts around us are sent from you, O oh God. So we thank you and we praise you in and through the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. And all God's people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. You want to share this message with somebody. Share this message with somebody. Encourage somebody. Don't just listen to it. Share it with a family member. Not for them to hear me. But when you share it, pray that the voice of God will speak something in their heart. The world needs hope. And you can be a conduit by simply sharing a message. God bless you. God keep you. May he cause his face to always shine upon you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And keep you in thanksgiving and in peace.